Okay, it's MK and I am back with another follow a sketch February and today I am doing a two page layout ish with a pocket page, but it's not going to really be an insert the way that I had to set up a few of my pages. They kind of sort of don't uh, I, I think it's um, read cohesively just because I, I had an extra space. So with that being said, I am still working on my um, what's it called? Ordnance Museum, which is basically um, a museum in Hawthorne, Nevada, that is where every weapon of every kind that was in any military or any war period um, is, in this, is at this museum. And it is amazing, you guys. Just the, the, the stories being told in this building are just phenomenal, really. And so is some of the unique stuff that you see in there. But what I'm showing you guys here is actually a couple pages that I picked out for my daughter's mini, not so many album that I was working on of her trip back in 2010, um, of her trip to Washington, D.C. and Boston and New York. And there was one other place, but now I can't remember. Um, but these were the pages that I picked out for those because they went to a lot of historical sites over east, right? And um, I just kind of sort of stopped working on that album because it was meant to be like this little folio album and it grew too big and now I have to come up with something else and my brain hurts. So <laughs> instead I thought, you know what, I'm really kind of sort of feeling the red, whites, and blues today. Um, it doesn't have kind of sort of nothing to do with the photos, but I do, that was really western of me. Um, it doesn't really have anything to do with the photos. However, there is a lot of red, white, and blue. They are very patriotic within the building. And so these kind of sort of just go with what, um, you know, these papers, basically. The, it was screaming for these papers is what I'm trying to spit out. So this is a paper pad that I picked out. I believe I got it either at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. I don't know. About once a year, um, we go over to Salt Lake or Twin Falls or um, even Reno and we kind of sort of hit the big box stores that I don't get to see on a daily basis. And the first thing I do is go and check out all their paper pads. What do they have new? What did I miss? And I know going from year to year is a huge difference, but it's definitely something that um, I enjoy doing just to go see if there's anything I need. And every now and then I pick up a paper pad, um, but I'm definitely not a paper pad person. So if I don't like 85% of it, I'm not interested in buying it. That is the rule that I have told myself, or I would just, have, this room would be full of papers, you guys. So anyways, what I have done here is I have created a couple cutouts that I just, I just quickly came up with and put on my Cricut and cut them out of paper because I didn't know what I was going to do, mixed media or whatever. And one of the little dr drone um, elements that I created was kind of sort of, uh, you know, what the heck is that type of deal? And it's supposed to be like a helicopter, but the inner piece is supposed to represent a lens, like a, like a camera lens. Now, these bad boys, um, the ones that I am taking, uh, or the ones that I'm scrapbooking, like I said, I've got an eight and a half by 11 page plus a 12 by 12 page page plus a pocket page. And so those are the three pages that I'm going to be doing, but the eight and a half by 11 and the pocket page are going to be made as one double page layout. They're just two different sizes. Um, I think that it's fun to do it this way. Um, but, uh, yeah, these, these, I was saying something about, you know, the really cool drones, but yeah, I, I lost it. It's gone. Yay. So anyways, um, they're kind of really hard to see, especially in the camera lens. If you were to see the photos really up close or actually go to the Ordnance Museum, that would be cool. I would be so happy. Anyways, um, if you guys saw what was in the video, it's these helicopter looking things, but they are only about 12 feet long. They're teeny tiny little anti-sub helicopters is kind of what they are. And um, actually they're called dashes, which is a drone anti-submarine um, helicopter. And they're just the neatest little things on the planet. They, they are unmanned. So they are driven by um, a machine or a computer, I should say. And I do have a picture because they actually have one of the original computers that it took to drive one of these machines. And it is an entire wall length long. And my husband and I were trying to explain it to the children that, yeah, that's how 
big computers had to be to hold all the data back in the day. Um, (laughs) Whoever shrunk the data is like amazing or shrunk the technology to hold all that data is just is my hero because, oh my gosh, I remember the size of computers. (laughs) Not like when they first came out and all that other stuff, but oh my gosh, I definitely don't remember the rooms of computers. But to run this this drone, um, it's, it's nothing but a wall of computers. It is absolutely crazy. Um, and then of course, on the deck of this, of the, um, aircraft carriers is where the controller is. So you've got the computers on a sub level and then up above you have the actual remote control, which is a little bit smaller. It's a little bit better. It's about, the, um, it's about the size of, I would say like a control room in, um, in a larger boat, you know, where you have a wheel and all that stuff. These are joysticks, of course. So when I was putting this together, I thought that it would be really cool if I had this teeny tiny little strip of washi tape. And as I am putting um, the washi tape on the eight and a half by 11 page, um, I go to do the top portion and bam, I run out. I had no idea. I thought I was going to have plenty Um, to work with. But nope, it just popped right off the roll. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? So I have this really super shiny. um, I don't even know what it's called. It's close to my heart. Like, I don't know, silver tape. I have no idea you guys. Um, (laughs) But I I used that. And to be honest, I, um, I didn't like it. And so I thought, you know what, the one piece I'm missing that was in the sketch was that huge panel in the center. So let's put that on there first and then see if I can't stretch the silver to go all the way across. Well, when I picked out this gorgeous like copper plate paper and I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be beautiful. I loved, I love this paper, you guys. Um, when I picked this out, I thought, I don't, I don't want to cut it down. I, I want this whole sheet. And so I decided I'm going to figure out how to get this whole sheet on there and then rip my washi tape so that way it's, um, can look like it goes all the way across and I don't have to use that ugly shiny stuff. Like it was uber shiny, you guys. Like I could see myself in the mirror of it. It was uber shiny. So, and if you guys know the name of it, I would love to know what the name of that is. All right. So I decided I'm not going to cut this down because if you look at it, which I thought was really cool, um, the stars are exactly 11 inches apart. So I I don't know, you guys, it just made me go like, huh, look at that. It looks like I meant to do that. Yes, I did. So when I go ahead and I cut off the two ends, the two half inches, it's actually the stars still are on there. And I was just so proud of myself that I was able to do that, um, you know, and get it to to play well (laughs) with a smaller dimension. I just I couldn't help myself. So I kept the entire 12 inch um, piece, which is not necessarily the same dimension as the sketch but remember the sketch is just a jumping off point so you don't really have to worry about whether or not you're doing it right or wrong it is uh, what you want to do and I want to use up my stuff that's that's what I constantly keep telling my kids when we do little small projects together I want to use my stuff Yes, I do. All right. So behind the scenes, I went and I took the cut aparts from the Simple Stories Hero Collection and I cut out all the ones that I thought were kind of relevant, but, you know, still generic enough to where they didn't, um, they weren't talking about a soldier. Okay. And so what I did was I decided that I wanted this like name badge or identification card on the one side um, where it's kind of sort of like, this is Dash. This is what he does. This is what, you know, and I thought it was really super cool um, because I, I just really think that, you know, he, he, he needed his own ID card. You know, I mean, once you start flying a drone around and I've heard this from other people that, that drives the smaller version (laughs) of these little guys, um, that it becomes like their partner, even though it's not really alive, that's, it's an extension of the person operating the drone. And so I just, to me, it just made a lot of sense. Now these drones, um, (coughs) if you guys are at all interested, Um, these drones were built back in the fifties and they went and they, um, the, I'm sorry, the military used them from 59 to 69. Um, and then of course they're still in operation today doing little things, um, like little Land Rover type of deals. They're not weaponized like these guys were, uh, by all means, but yes, they actually, um, 
they actually used these. They're called, they are long range. So, I mean, they can go on forever. Um, but there's nobody inside them. And there's four or there's, I'm sorry, three missiles on, um, attached to these little guys. There is um, two MK-44s and one MK-46. Seriously, to do some damage. But it was during, um, like it was during that, um, when the when the Russians were doing the nuclears and they were building subs faster than we could, um, you know, breathe. Uh, so we had to come up with something, seriously. Uh, so that way it could go. There's 755 of these little guys in existence, um, if you guys are curious at all. And then also, too, they're, they can fly up to 50 or 95 miles an hour. Whew, I couldn't tell you guys. That is just absolutely crazy um, if, if you, you know, you ask me. Um, but yes, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um I forgot what I was saying. Yep. So, yeah, 90 miles, 90, 95 miles an hour. They can go all the way over to, um, they can go up to 16,000 feet in the air. And they climb at, you know, like how fast they can get up there is 1,880 feet a minute. That's like super fast, you guys. They have a Boeing T-50 um, turbo shaft engine inside them. Or I should say it's like a jet engine. So that's how they are able to take off and go as fast as they can. So anyways, I just decorated the layout using the bits and pieces that I took off the sticker sheet that came in my paper pad, as well as some of the cut aparts that I did. Now, I truly did cut them apart, you guys. I didn't keep them in their card format. And then, of course, so my, cut, my own cutouts actually blended in I just sprayed them with the exact same ink that I used for the back um, the background paper which I didn't want to leave it just plain cardstock so I inked it up and scuffed it up in pumice stone and then of course put a little bit of spray on it but I knew a whole lot of it wasn't going to be showing so it was kind of you know uh, let's just see if it works type of deal but I'm okay if it doesn't show anything um, and then I also sprayed them with the same pumice stone ink so here is um the the pictures now these pictures here are all of the cards going all the way around both drones now we have two drones in the ordnance museum one is nicknamed snoopy because it was the first drone that actually had a camera on it it was like the first one to see let's you know because most of them are flown by radar and that is what that one little circle represented was the radar screen and every time that the little thing goes around you see the little blips and you know you get you get what I'm saying um and so when they first decided that they were going to put a camera on of course there was lots and lots of deals it's one of those where it records it and then comes back and they have to play back the information it definitely wasn't real time let's look at it type of deal like they have now so I have to tell you guys, um, yeah, so that's the only one that was nicknamed, which was Snoopy. I thought it was pretty cute. Uh, also too, I decided that I was going to just add some gold splatters. I've already got silver. I've already got copper. Might as well add some gold just to give it a little bit of something different. And I really like it in my card more than I liked it in, um, the, the pages, you know? So anyways, be sure to check out everyone else that is playing along with Follow a Sketch February. Again, um, the link down below is for the Facebook group album where all of the goodness is taking place. And you just click on a sketch and they're in, they're in day order, so like 1 through 28. Um, and so you just click on the sketch and you will see this. Now this one here is not for um, today. I think it was day five or something, you guys. I apologize not knowing what day it was, but it was one of the ones up at the front that I already had an assignment for, but I really liked it and I wanted to do it. So anyways, um, yes, check out the Facebook group, you guys. Seriously, it is so much fun every, Feb every February. She also has a bunch of other stuff going on throughout the rest of the year as well that are, um, you know, it's no hassle, no worry, no hassle, no stress. E you get to it when you get to it type of deal. And that's the kind of person Sandy has always been. So I think that that is amazing. And I love the uh, ideas that she comes up with. All right. Thank you so much. And I will check y'all later.
Bye.